Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I am going to be sharing with you my tool holding setup on my anvil stand. Now here recently, as of the recording of this video, John Switzer had put out a video over at Black Bear Forge on his anvil setup and kind of around his anvil, his stand and some of the methods he uses to organize his tooling. And I found that to be incredibly helpful and I think it'd be incredibly informative to you out there, the blacksmithing community. So if you don't know John Switzer at Black Bear Forge and you haven't subscribed to him yet, I'll put a link there in the cards to his channel and I highly suggest you go and check him out and consider subscribing. He is definitely worth your subscription. You won't be disappointed. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into what my anvil stand looks like. Okay, so here we are at my anvil stand. As you can see, this is the front of the anvil. I've got a kiss block here or a upset block on the front of Olga here, a 465 pound uh, North German anvil. You all have seen her and love her in most of the videos as I love forging on her but she sits on a 350 pound steel base that is a tri-leg base that I've mentioned in other videos before, uh, but basically it's a heavy steel plate with some really stout legs welded up. I have welded these little bars here along the front so this way the hardy tooling, the shanks, can fit through there and it can be dropped down and this can be put anywhere on this stand basically I can organize this however I like and these are all my most used tools I keep all my most used tools here along the sides and around the front now the ones that I use less often I put up front the stuff that I use more often is either over here just out of frame we'll get to that here in a second or to the left or the back because those are easier for me to just reach down and pick up versus reaching over the anvil to pick something up but I do use these tools quite frequently so I have things like chucking down a swedge like that give me a second Ooh, yeah. so I have things like this little swedge block here it's just a little 3 8 swedge fits on the hardy hole of the anvil I've got a pair of bending forks a bic that is smaller in diameter than what the horn of my anvil is. I feel that that's a must for most beginners, uh, for most shops to have. Um, you know, whether you have a horn on your anvil or not, you may not even have a horn, but you may have a hardy hole and a bick is almost essential. I also have a rivet header, bottom rivet header tool that goes in the anvil block itself whenever I'm setting rivets, especially with the air riveter. It's very handy. I've got my hold down tool. I've got plans for this over on my website, blacksmithpdfs.com. So if you haven't seen those, you might want to check it out. Uh, I made that tool holder. It really clamps down. It's basically like what you guys have seen, just a hold down tool, but it's a mechanical nature. I like it pretty good. Then I've got some bigger forks back here. And then I have a stake anvil that I have forged that can go both ways this way. It's got a little square horn and a round horn. That is really nice for fine uh, type work. So that's pretty much the front. Uh, it's gonna be a reoccurring pattern. Again, I just welded on some one inch quarter by one stock, uh, flat stock to take and make this opening so I can drop my tooling down in there. So let's head over to the other side of the anvil and I'll show you that. So this is the back side of the anvil. This is my working area here where I would normally stand. On this side, I've got Mr. Thing, my little handy dandy pointer finger here that I use when metal is really super hot. I did a whole video tutorial on that. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. And there's a magnet here that's stuck on the side and that allows me to just stick that right there on the side of the anvil and I can pull it loose real nice and easy when I have need of it. So that's a pretty handy way of doing it. I found it handy anyhow. I have a six pound sledgehammer right here. Actually, I think it's an eight pound sledgehammer. Uh, it's a little short handled sledge. Uh, I don't use it too often. I'll usually use it with two hands sometimes if I need to upset a piece like in the hardy hole by myself 
versus having a much longer handled sledge that I can't really fit in this space back here. Again, it's just a conveniency tool. If I've got a lot of heavy sledge work to do, I don't do it on the anvil itself. I do that over at the sledge block with a much longer handled sledge. I have a planishing tool. This is just a stake planishing tool. As you can see, it's a little bit rusted up now, but a quick buff on the buffer wheel will take all that back off. That there is for taking and planishing out the inside of bowls. I have a scroll starter right here that goes into the hardy hole of the anvil. I've also, I haven't made a video on a scroll starter yet. That's one of the things I plan on making. I also have a scroll rivet bucking bar. I've made a video on that. That sits in the anvil and hangs off the one edge so this way you can fit scroll work and get the insides of that scroll work riveted. I also have all of my guillotine dies sitting flat over here on this side because there's a nice flat space for them to be able to live and hang out. Uh, it looks kind of junky but uh, I go through them so much that it just kind of cycles through so they don't really stack neat, nice and neat. Eventually I'll have to come up with a much better holder system for that, but uh, that's a subject for another video. Of course I've got my hardy on this side. I have a radius block for when I do need a, like a 3 8 radius edge or something on a piece I'm working. I have my poor boys flatter. Made that in a video here on the channel. All the tools that I've made that I'm showing you that I say that I had on this channel, that'll all be linked up in the description if you have interest in watching those videos. Uh, I've got a couple other set hammers that I've made for different purposes. That one was out of a ball peen. This one was just out of a straight piece of 1045. Uh, again, just made those set hammers there. I've got a chain link riveting stake right here. Uh, I did that in a video as well. It's a chain maker stake, so this way it hangs off the side once you have a length of chain, so you can weld up the inside of the loops. It's just a swedge. I've got my butcher block brush, and I've got a cupping tool that I've made in a video as well. So on the back side of the anvil, so I can just keep the video short, basically it's the same setup as this side, but it holds two different style guillotine tools. One here that I made plans for, that are on my website at blacksmithpdfs.com. I went ahead and made up this tool here. This is for a lot narrower butchering operations that I need to do, uh, you know, fullering operations and whatnot. So I made that tool right there, pretty handy. Um, and then my other guillotine tool, which is slightly more robust, and it's for heavier, heavier dies and things like that. And that's what most of these dies are for. I haven't got around to making up the dies for the smaller 3 8 one. So here's just a quick top-down perspective of the way that it looks around the anvil, uh, kind of a bird's eye view. Again, I've got all that stuff from the front, the back, over to my right, closest to the forge, over to my left, away from the forge, and that's basically how I've got my anvil set up laid out. I don't really like a bunch of tools laying around on the ground. I don't like to have to have buckets. I like to put things up in storage racks or as close at hand as I can get them. I've got tong racks on the back wall of my shop. You guys see those all the time. And that's also where I carry my hammers and some of my more specialty tooling that I don't need on a regular basis. But it's important that when you lay out your anvil that you don't lay out your anvil according to my method or John Switzer's method. It is important that you take and adapt some of the things that we've taught you here and apply them in your own shop to your own method, your own workflow. Because the main purpose of this is this fits my needs. Everything that I've got around my anvil is highly customizable. It just fits my needs personally for my type of work. Same thing with John Switzer over at Black Bear Forge. He's set his up over the you know, three decades or so that he's been doing it. He has set that up to fit his needs and his style of work. So 
feel free to experiment around with some different configurations. Uh, this is probably the fourth or fifth iteration of the things that I've got around the base of my anvil, and I'm sure it won't stop there. By the time I've been at it as long as John has, I'm sure this is going to change up quite a few more times. So feel free to experiment, just apply what we've done here. Hopefully something has helped you in this video or John Switzer's video. Again, I highly recommend him that you go check him out if you get the chance. And that's where I'll leave you today. God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.